Weekend is live again. It's Will's Take On Sports. I am the host, Will Walker. Thank you for taking the time to, to listen to me this morning as I'm getting ready to give you some, give you just my opinion of what's been going on in sports. Been absolutely nuts. Podcast 1024 is the title. Well, damn. That's my reaction to what's been going on in the World Series. The doggone Houston Astros just... I've been just totally dead wrong about what's been going on with the Major League Baseball postseason. Also going to talk about opening night of the NBA overreaction to what happened in the Battle of of L.A. I try to tell people Clippers are legit. They are legit for one game. They look like the better team in L.A., but that's just one game. Still got 81 more to go for those two teams. Justice Winslow went absolutely nuts last night. So did Kyrie Irving. Justice Winslow handling his business for my Miami Heat last night as they beat the Memphis Grizzlies. But before I get into all that, well, damn. I doggone you Washington Nationals. Them boys balling. Them boys are balling. Juan Soto, breakout star, without a doubt. But it's just not, it's just not him. Suzuki. I mean, it has just been as I the Washington Nationals barely made the postseason. They got by uh in a game against the Milwaukee Brewers in a in the wild card game. Speaking of Juan Soto, he had a key base hit that turned into an error, but he did get that base hit. The left fielder made a mistake, the right fielder made a mistake. You know, didn't play the ball well that allowed Washington to get the lead late in that game in the world in the, uh, the wild card game. They went on to win at home. Then they went to the next round. Played against the L.A. Dodgers and beat the Dodgers. The team I picked to win the World Series. Crazy, man, what they're doing. And it's just. It's just crazy. I, I can't even explain it, but like I said, Major League Baseball, you can you can have a dominant team, you can have a dominant postseason, I mean a dominant regular season, and all of a sudden the postseason things just turn around. So the crazy heard the crazy number out of the last twenty games, they're eighteen and two. The Washington and Nash, the Washington Nationals is is up two zero going home for the next three games. Washington, I mean, didn't did not see this coming. I, I didn't. It's just it's it's unbelievable what they're doing so far in the World Series. But can they? Is it possible they that they will sweep the Houston Astros? Is it even possible? Twelve to three at home, man. And it wasn't like they were just they. they it's just timely hitting. Swinging bunts. I mean, they're getting all the breaks. Are they the team of destiny? Will this will this go back to Houston after these next? If if, if there's a next three games, Houston's got to win Game Three. Go down three zero. I don't think it's. I don't know. I know it happened a couple of years ago. Uh, the Boston Red Sox was down three zero to the New York Yankees and came back and won the next four games. Will that? I mean, Houston has to win. Coming back from 3-0 in the World Series, that's a lot of pressure. But that is one of the things I'm taking away from what I'm seeing. It seems like the pressure is – is uh, I, I'm not going to say this. It looks like it's getting to the Houston Astros a little bit. But they seem to be pressing. I, I, I mean, 107 wins, they seem to be pressing, and they're just not – they're not getting the, the quality pitching. And Garrett Cole, didn't, he, he struggled in his start. Justin Verlander. Struggled in his start. They got no. They, I think they're going to go with Zach Grinky in uh, uh, Game Three. But I mean, can can the Houston Astros pull it together and, and get back in this series in Game Three on Saturday? My bad on Friday. That's got to be the key. Because I don't. I don't, just don't see them winning uh, that many games. Uh, the, I mean, to win four in a row. I think that's going to be really, really tough for them. You know, great game though. I mean, great for the great for the Washington Nationals. Hey, congrats! The Mystics won the WNBA title. 
maybe the Nationals can follow up and give get a city another champion this year and get him a World Series title. First time in franchise history. Would be awesome. But would be awesome uh, for DC. And it's, it's been just that's the one thing about, like I said, Major League Baseball postseason. You do get you, you get unexpected. You get you get these upsets, these unexpected runs that you. I mean, my I'm, I'm a Miami Marlins fan. When, when they were the Florida Marlins, they upset the powerful Yankees when they were in the midst of their dynasty run. The Marlins upset them. So, I, I mean, I've seen this before. I mean, in 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 the in Major League Baseball post postseason, so it's, it's possible that it can happen. You know, great pitching, timely hitting. I said it in a preview of the Major League Baseball postseason uh, tournament. So, am I shocked at this result? Yeah, I got to be honest with you. I knew I know it's possible can ha- it, it, it could possibly happen, but I am totally shocked about what's going on. All right, let me turn my attention to the NBA uh, opening night. Started off Tuesday night. Uh, the Raptors got their rings, was able to uh, win in overtime. Um, Raptors, they should be competitive, like I said. All right, let me just quickly let me go ahead and just get into this battle of LA. It, it to me, what happened was no shock. Because I thought the, the Clippers are the deeper team. The Lakers have two outstanding players and a bunch of journeymen. And that's what it looked like, although Danny Green went off in the third quarter. And Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard looks like he is definitely on a mission. I don't think it's that I don't think it's this narrative of he wants to prove that he's the best player. I think he just wants to win a championship for his city. I think that's what I think that's what it's all about. And he's showing just a little bit more personality. He did the commercial with the Terminator about the Terminator uh a movie coming out that that. He's got his commercial about this is my city. A lot of people overreacting to that. He's from LA. He should claim his home. I I don't I don't see any issue with that. But as far as that game went, um, the Lakers better get they better get some help. They they better get some help in that backcourt because LeBron James is not going to be able to to carry to, to carry that much of a load for an eighty two game season and a deep playoff run. He just can't. They're going to have to get they're going to have to get somebody uh, else to come to backcourt. Is that Ray John Rondo? I don't know. It definitely ain't Avery Bradley. Danny Green's not going to shoot seven for eight on three-pointers. He he probably won't make seven three-pointers in the next seven games. N- nothing against Danny Green. That's just how he is. He's just a streaky guy. So, but it, in regards to that game, Kawhi had, he played well. The difference in that game was the, the Clippers bench. Uh, everybody knows Lou Williams can play. Montrez Harrell is an energy guy. Patrick Beverly is an energy guy. The big pickup for – that team, and it came in a. It came from he this, this more heartless guy. And if you don't, if you don't know who he is, just go back and watch uh, when he was with Portland last year and what they did in that postseason run and how valuable of a, a player he was to Portland last year. They traded him to Miami for the Havon Hassan Whiteside deal, and Miami sent him over to the L.A. Clippers. So that more heartless deal is big time. Got a lot of guys, 6'9", six, 6'8", six, Mo Harkless. They get Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. Got a lot of guys in that area. I didn't even know they had Rodney Magruder, too. Rodney Magruder is another energy guy, and he can shoot the outside shot, and he loves to play defense. That's how he got on the Miami Heat roster. Doc Rivers has got a squad full of guys that uh, that are hungry and that are energy guys. The Clippers look like the team to beat. They're not an overwhelming favorite. No matter what the outcome of that game was, but they look like the team to beat. I'm not ruling. It. I'm not ruling the Lakers out. But I just think they just need a little bit more in order to beat the Clippers because the Clippers have so many guys. They have such a a much deeper team um, that can put uh, with guys that can provide quality minutes. And that's my that's my take on on that particular uh, that game that happened between uh, the Clippers and the Lakers. Going turning my attention to Kyrie Irving hit fifty. He hit 50 last night. 
I think Kyrie's on the, Kyrie's on a mission. Uh, seems uh, last night I watched most of that game. Um, as I was switching back and forth between the World Series, uh, that game and then my Miami Heat. Kyrie took a lot of shots, a lot of shots, thirty three of them. That's a lot. Seven for fourteen on three pointers, fifty percent. But he did have seven. He had fifty points and seven assists. So that means he was passing the ball. It's just that you know he was the guy. And the next closest guy shot the ball 19 times. That was uh, that Levert kid who was really, really nice. I think that kid played at Michigan, if I'm correct. He's nice. He hit 20 points. They lost in overtime by one point. The Nets are going to be there. They, they will be there. I watched Philly uh, a little bit, not all of that game, just in, in and out of that game. Caught the highlights this morning. Um, everybody, everybody's ragging on Ben Simmons, can't shoot no jump shot. Yeah, you can rag on it all you want to, but Ben Simmons can't shoot a jump shot, but he can go to the basket. He And he went to the basket last night. Boston has nothing inside that can stop uh, a guy like him. Al Horford now plays with the Philadelphia 76ers. The Morris twin is in New York. They don't have – they really don't. They have great they, – they, they have athletic wing players, perimeter players. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Marcus Smart. But they don't have anything on the inside to, to, to hang with. Philly is big. They are long on that starting that starting five. Congratulations to Josh Richardson. Josh Richardson is going to prove that he he's a player. A lot of people uh, questioning that about Josh Richardson. Josh is going to prove he's a player, and he is a player. He was nice with the Miami Heat. He's is he a guy that is he a franchise player? No, but he's a great compliment to uh, great compliment uh, player to the stars. And he's with two of them now. Embiid didn't even have a monster game. He he crashed the boards and did what he needed to do. But Philly, real team, legit. The Miami Heat played last night without Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler had, was out for personal reasons. Um, and Justice Winslow seems to be turning that corner. He was a he was a he was a lottery pick for the Miami Heat. But the guy that really I think for the Heat, that's going to be the most improved, that's going to uh, get an opportunity to win that most improved player if he stays healthy, healthy is Bam Adebayo. Bam Adebayo is an effort guy. He is getting, He's crashing the boards. He's playing defense. He's doing everything he needs to do. And he, I, I see why now they went, that during the last half of last season, he was the starter. Hassan, Hassan Whiteside, had the contract, but Bam Adebayo was the starter for the Miami Heat last season, uh, during, the, during the second half of the season last year, and now he's the starter from day one. Double-digit rebounds, and can he give you just enough points? I think it's possible because he's going he's gonna to play with such great effort. They're not going to run no plays for him because he doesn't have any post game. But I think he's going to get a lot of he's going to get a lot of uh, effort plays, a lot of effort points. He, and and Justice Winslow now is I guess you could say he's the point guard. That's what I saw last night. Although uh, the nun kids started at point guard, and then they started the, the rookie hero in the backcourt. Justice Winslow is the guy that brought the ball up court. Justice Winslow, man, I'm I'm happy for Justice Winslow because he seems to be he seems to now get it what his role is. He's he, he when he first came uh, into the league for the Miami Heat. He played more of a uh, – uh, he was a he was a defensive guy with that team with uh, Bosch and Wade. And now he seems to be turning that corner to where he's getting – you know, he knows where his spots are. Uh, distributing the ball real well. He still plays um, solid defense. And now he seems to – his offensive game seems to be turning the corner, 27 points. not going to go really overreact and say he's going to definitely be a 20-point scorer this year. But I think he – he, he he's nice. Bam out of bio, Justice Winslow, Jimmy Butler. And then they got that hero kid who just who just shoots. He can, and he has a nice stroke. He really does. He has a nice stroke. I'm not gonna put much stock in depending on a rookie um for my Miami Heat, but nice. Uh let me see. Any other uh let's see. What's going on? The San Antonio Spurs way to beat the New York Knicks last night. RJ Barrett had a solid game, nine for thirteen. Not bad. I said he's gonna shoot a lot. And he shot and it was and it was effective. Nine for thirteen is not bad. 
Denver went to Portland and won despite uh, Dame Lillard getting 32. The big kid, the joker in the middle, still still looks solid. Denver's going to be a team. Utah's going to be a team. So it's, it's over the night. NBA. I haven't looked. I haven't looked forward to an NBA season in a long time. I, I have to go back to when uh, LeBron signed with my Miami Heat. But this is going to be a competitive year. I, I spoke about the Clippers. Yeah, they are. They are the team to beat, but they're not no overwhelming. They're not the overwhelming favorite. They they have a solid team, but there are some teams in this league. There there are some teams in that Western Conference, especially Dallas, Luca. Prozingis, Tim Hardaway Jr. Outside, outside, outside shooting. That's that's what that's how I look at it. Shooter, shooter, shooter. And tonight we're gonna see the best shooter in the league go up. Um, yes, the Golden State Warriors are gonna open their season tonight. But the game before that, I'm really interested in and seeing uh, Milwaukee. They're getting they're gonna open their season tonight as they get as Milwaukee gets ready to play. I mean, I, I think I saw this. Let me check and see who Milwaukee's playing tonight real quick. It's going to be interesting to see what happens between, uh, yeah, Milwaukee's at Houston. Big time matchup right there. We got Russell Westbrook and James Harden at home against uh, Giannis. Going to be an interesting ball game. That's, that's going to be good. Great opening night matchup. And then the Clippers are going to play their second game, and the Warriors are going to open their season. Like I said, the best shooter in the game is Steph Curry. And let me talk about this Steph, this Michael Jordan thing with – I didn't even see it as a big issue. I swear sometimes the, the, the media just over, overdoes things. He said he, – Michael Jordan just simply said he's not a Hall of Famer yet, which is true. He's not a Hall of Famer yet because he's not in the Hall of Fame. He's still playing. I mean, sometimes the – everything has to be instant analysis. So what did he mean? What did he say? Well, what he said was he's not a Hall of Famer yet. Jeez. It's not even that serious. No hate. I don't think that was no hate on Stephen Curry. Just, he's not a Hall of Famer yet. He, and he's not. I mean, my goodness. All right, let me talk about the NFL. The, the, the trades in the NFL that have happened all the seem to be about what the NFL is now. The NFL is a pass-happy league. So you're going you're seeing trades and I don't think I've seen this many post this this many mid-season trades in the NFL. Um but I was but you're seeing wide receivers and then guys who cover wide receivers. <laughs> that's what seems to be the deals uh that's going on in the NFL. Is that pass happy league? I mean, Sunu from Atlanta go he goes from a one-win team goes to the team that's the po- the prohibitive favorite, the the overwhelming favorite, <laughs> the, the the New England Patriots, and uh, they need a wide receiver, wide receiver because Josh Gordon uh, is out for the year, so they need they need a wide receiver. Philip Dorsett hasn't been able to play, so now you got Julian Edelman and then Sunu. So Tom Brady's got a little something. They still they still gonna have that quick passing game, gonna give you enough running, but their defense is outstanding. I don't know how much you could take from really what the schedule they played, but. They haven't really played solid, I guess you could say, overwhelming offenses. They've been playing, been playing okay offenses, but their defense is it's just balling, man. The Patriots are just balling. Uh, and now they got uh, a wide receiver um, to go on that team. So, But I haven't I, – I just can't remember. Jalen Ramsey going from the Jaguars to the Rams, you know. It's a pass-happy league. You need guys that can catch and guys that can cover those guys. So, but I haven't seen this many uh, mid-season trades. I don't really have any uh, anything to think about Sunu because I didn't. I mean, he did what he doing what he he did what he did with Atlanta. He should make a huge difference with the Patriots, but uh, I don't know. I can't really say. I can't really say because I really don't know much about him. You know, on Atlanta, it was all about uh, Julio Jones, and then uh, the second year guy Calvin Ridley, who's not having that great of a second season. You know, Sunu did what he did. He was what he was. That's just what it boils down to. All right, you know what I do. I like to pick five games in college football and the NFL. So I'm going to get right into that right now. All right. 
first game I'm going to look at as I look at the schedule is going to be Wisconsin going up against Ohio State. It's going to be a noon kickoff. That's going to be on Fox. Check that out. Wisconsin coming off that uh, that shocking upset loss to Illinois. Ohio State has looked so far uh, like the best team in college football. This game will be at the horseshoe. Got to go with the home team here. I would go with the home team even if Wisconsin was undefeated, even if that upset hadn't happened. I just think Ohio State just has too much to lose to a team that's mostly uh, a running team. And I think you're going to need a, a diverse offense to be able to hang with uh, Ohio State because Ohio State's defense is really good at all levels. Uh, Start with the defensive end, Chase Young who, in my opinion, is looking like the best player in college football. So I just don't think Wisconsin has enough to beat Ohio State. And then coming off that loss to Illinois, they, they really, uh, uh, I guess you could say, I, I don't know. They don't, they don't look all that good, and they were exposed a little bit in that game. All right, the next guy I want to talk about is LSU versus Auburn. This will be another tough test for LSU. The Florida game was a, was, a, was a solid test, so this will be another one. This game will be played. They will be on the road. They will be going down to southeast Alabama to play against Auburn. No, no, my bad. The game is not in Auburn. The game is in LSU. So Auburn is going to be on the road. LSU, LSU will get another tough get tough game at home. They go to Tuscaloosa. That's what I'm thinking about. All right, anyway, I think uh, LSU has just got too much for Auburn. Auburn's defense line has not been what I thought they would be. Um, I thought they would be just overwhelming offensive lines this, this season, and they have not. They have been suspect. Auburn lost to Florida. LSU beat Florida. That's the common opponent. So, with that being said, I'm going to go with LSU at home. Um, I think uh, Joe Burrow and company will be able to just uh, they, they, they'll be, do they score 30 points? That's the, that's the question of the day for me. Will they score 30? Possibly. I, I think they can. I just don't think Auburn's been playing all that well defensively. Um, like I thought they would. I thought that defense line would just be just, like I said, lights out, just locking everybody up. All right, next guy I'm going to talk about is uh, Notre Dame going up against Michigan. Uh, this game is going to be in Michigan in Ann Arbor. What can I mean, what can you say? What can I say about Jim Harbaugh? That the fact that, yes, he has not won any big game since he's been the coach there. This is a this is another big time test. Notre Dame is the eighth ranked team in the country. Notre Dame has athletes on offense. They have athletes on defense. Michigan supposed to be was supposed to be a defensive, a solid defensive team, even with losing uh, Devin Bush Jr. from last year. They they supposed to be solid again this year. Shea Patterson was supposed to be the quarterback that uh, was able to help Jim Harbaugh and uh, the Wolverines go to the next level. He hasn't shown that. They lost last week in a big time a big time showcase game against Penn State. Although that game was in Penn State, uh, the drop touchdown uh, in the end zone, but they fell behind early. I mean, this is a tough pick. It, this really is. This is one of the ones I got to go back and forth on. Michigan at oh man, I mean Notre Dame at Michigan. This, that's a tough pick for me. But I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Michigan pulls the upset. Uh, at home, Jim Harbaugh gets his first, I guess you can say, signature win uh, as the, as Michigan as Michigan coach. So I'm, I'm gonna give it to him. All right, let me turn my attention to two games in the NFL that I'm really interested in. Uh, that's gonna happen: the Philadelphia Eagles going up against the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are at home. The Bills are coming off uh, a poor first half against the Dolphins, and then. Showed that they were the better team in the second half. Philadelphia is coming off that loss at Dallas. Now they're on the road again. Supposedly, Philadelphia has all kind of issues going on. Um, it was bought, It was uh, reported guys were late to meetings during the Dallas week or whatever. And this is coming off their coaches' guarantee that they were going to go down to Dallas and win. They ain't heard no guarantees this week. 
Philadelphia does have a chance to win this game. Buffalo's offense isn't that good. And Philadelphia secondary isn't that good. Philadelphia's defense hasn't been that good, but I think they can hold Buffalo down. Buffalo's offense ain't nothing special. Josh Allen is having a, a solid season, but he's he's a service he's a serviceable quarterback. He, he's not a fr- franchise quarterback, you know what I'm saying? But he's he's decent. He's done enough to to help Buffalo get to the point where they are with only one loss so far this season. They'll get their second loss. I'm gonna go with the Philadelphia Eagles to win on the road uh, in Orchard Park. All right, the next game I want to look at is the New York Jets at the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jets were <laughs> were just beat up by the New England Patriots. Sam Darnold, mic'd up. Shouldn't have been mic'd up. There was some things that he said that's got uh, the Jets furious with NFL films. I don't know why. They should be mad at his play. Jacksonville Jaguars are doing just enough. Um, I got to admit to be there. They're, they've been solid without when after Nick Foles went down. Minsu, the quarterback, has been okay. Um, but we're they, you know what? I'm going to pick the Jets to win this game. I know the Jets stunk up the joint against the Patriots, but I, I don't believe in the Jaguars' offense. And their defense is what it is. It's, it's good enough, but it's not that defense um, from the 2017 season. So I'm going to pick the Jets to pull the upset in Jacksonville. No Duval. No Duval. All right, that's my time. I want to thank you guys so much for taking the opportunity and the time to download and listen to Will's Take on Sports. Listen, follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at WWS underscore sports show. Also, the show can be heard on anchorfm.com. If you can't catch it there, it's on Spotify. It's on CastBox, uh, the iTunes, uh, Google Play Podcast for Android users, TuneIn app, Stitcher, YouTube. And if you're listening to the show on Facebook or you uh, live or if you hear it uh, just by clicking on it, um, off of my Facebook page. Listen, follow the show from the face on, on Facebook. Um, just type Will's Take on Sports in the search and just uh, click like. Also, if you have any comments, please leave it on where the show is posted at. All of um, the platforms I just mentioned, there is the opportunity to leave a comment or also subscribe and follow the show on any of those platforms I mentioned that you're listening to this show. I want to thank you guys again so much for being uh, a loyal listener and a follower. I got to give a big shout out again to the West Coast, to California. A lot of love out there. I really appreciate it. And then I got some overseas, uh, some people over in the UK that listen to this show. I really want to say thank you so much. I, I appreciate all the love and everything. If you have, Like I said, if you have any comments, just let me know. Also, you can contact me at willwalkershow at yahoo.com. Let me know. Some have done that. Some have given me some positive, some positive noise and some negative noise. Doesn't matter. If you want to be a guest, just let me know. We can make that possible. I like to have guests on Sundays when I have my brothers on here with me, but during the week, I do it by myself. But it is what it is. Again, I close this show the same way every week. Say a prayer for somebody because prayer changes things. I holler. Y'all be safe. You'll hear from me again on Sunday. <laughs>